it's almost time. Let's <laughs> party. Hi, and apologies for that headache inducing advert for a modern Asus gaming monitor. Today we're going to be looking at a not so modern Asus gaming monitor, a monitor from back in the day, possibly from the birth of the concept of gaming monitors as we come to know it today. This is an Asus LCD monitor PG191. It says on the box it's rock solid. It says that it's heart touching. So expect to have your heart touched in this video. I better get it out and see if my CRT collection has anything to worry about. As we get it up in its polystyrene, we can see there's some interesting stuff going on here. There's a lot of metal in there, a lot of kind of aluminium older thingy jigs as we get the polys off the end yeah there's uh interesting stuff going on here to say the least <laughs> it's a, a solid looking chunk of metal on the back of the plastic monitor and if you turn it around you can see it's got a very very high gloss bezel so attract lots of fingerprints i would think unless you're careful lots of stickers so yeah like cars if you put a sticker on it it'll go faster I did do a bit of Googling and there was some information about this online. There was a review by a trusted, trusted views, I think they're called. I think they belong to a publisher, the people that publish PC Pro and I think Custom PC. The site belongs to them. So they reviewed this back in the day in January 2006 and they didn't give it stellar reviews. They The main question was this must have been right around the time that people were starting to get widescreen monitors and games were supporting that sort of widescreen resolution that we're used to these days. And their main question was, why is this a 4.3 monitor? Good for me now, doing retro stuff, bad for the modern gamer in the day. But apart from that, they gave it sort of fairly average review for the image quality. They liked the sound and they thought the buttons and the touch sensitivity and all that stuff was a gimmick. One nice bit of information I found was on Asus's website themselves they have a little timeline of the things that they're kind of proud of developing so they start off in 1989 when they created their first 386 motherboard and then in 1990 apparently they worked directly with intel to develop the first isa 486 motherboards so that was something i didn't know interesting to see a bit of history there and in 1996 they produced their first graphics card it was a PCI card, their first PCI port card. So it's interesting to see, like, you know, so many of these manufacturers fall by the wayside. But here you've got one that's been there since way back in the day, slowly growing, and now they're a bit of a powerhouse today. And then we start getting into kind of stuff that you recognize from the sort of modern, modern era. Uh, in 2002, they introduced a graphics card that's got a black PCB. I remember reading about this and sort of being vaguely fascinate, fascinated by it, but never been able to afford any of this stuff. But the, those days when you used to get motherboards with black PCBs and and it was just a sign of quality, all the extra lamination and stuff that they had going on. And, you know, they didn't bend and the traces didn't break and stuff like that. It's all fairly standard now, though. 2006, we see the introduction of the Republic of Gamers brand which we're still very familiar with when you buy Asus stuff today the gaming stuff and then bang there it is 2006 PG191 was the first Asus LCD display designed primarily for gamers so yeah it really must have been an early one because you would imagine they'd all been kind of dabbling their toes in that kind of water at the time but yeah this is Asus's first ever gaming monitor which makes it kind of interesting. The fact that it's 4-3 aspect ratio just makes it potentially awesome for retro gaming, but we'll find out about that in a moment. Okay, so now we just need to get it set up and take a look. We'll have a quick look around what we've got, first of all. So we've got some easy stickers here. There's this one, <laughs> it's called Splendid, but basically it's just your screen modes, different color temperatures and different gamma and that kind of thing for night mode and brilliant mode and game mode and all that kind of thing. There's another 
easy sticker with try me so basically between these two stickers there's a load of uh, touch sensitive buttons which don't work very well i have to say they are lit up so you can see sort of where your volume and your menu buttons are and things at all times which i guess is quite cool so i'm sitting looking at an aoc 4k monitor at the minute that i do my video editing on and that has touch sensitive and it doesn't tell you where anything is and it's really quite hard to find where to put your finger to get the menus up up on the top we've got a 1.3 megapixel webcam built into the monitor which is quite cool and on the asus website all of the downloads for this monitor are still there so you can get all the manuals and everything and all of the webcam software that goes with this i'm not going to have a look at it today no real use to me but i might have a, a look at it at some point taking a closer look at that aluminium stand this <laughs> kind of a funny thing it looks like it's got a massive hinge on the back but that is actually a subwoofer so this thing has built-in speakers and it's got a 10 watt subwoofer built right into that big cylindrical hinge thing on the monitor stand so yeah like i said this thing is pretty nice it's a swivel and tilt it doesn't do portrait or anything like that. And then you've got this massive subwoofer behind the monitor, which I'm looking forward to trying because, you know, it's nice to get the old beige speakers out and stuff every now and then, but day-to-day -day use, not having speakers on the desk would be cool. And if this is good enough, this is what I'm going to be using. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the sound quality is like. EG191, the, the ultimate, ultimate gaming, gaming experience. experience. Connector wise, pretty boring. We've got a power connector, we've got a DVI connector, we've got a DGA connector. There's a headphone and a mic input at the bottom here as well. And there's a couple of stereo adapters in those at the minute. I think the guy I bought it off said his kids used it for an Xbox or something back in the day. It's probably something to do with that between them, where that white dongly thing is. That's the, the output for the subwoofer and but on the left we've got a USB data adapter so that you can use, I think there's two USB 2 ports on the side of this. So without further ado, the Silver Beast is out. I've replaced the, I think it had a Radeon 9800SE in it, but I've replaced it with the 9800 Pro. And I don't know if this monitor works yet or not. I've had it for a few weeks. It's been sitting on the floor and we're going to find out if it works right now. Right, boot it up and we can test out the sound. So in the OSD, using these slightly dodgy, it has to be said, touch sensitive buttons, they are cool to look at, but they don't work tremendously well. But a bunch of presets, I could hear sound coming out of this thing and running through the presets. It actually is pretty good, I have to say. It's probably the best sound I've ever heard coming out of a monitor. And that includes the the one that I'm actually editing on now, which is a modern sort of AOC 4K monitor, and the sound is pathetic, to say the least, and who would want to use it unless you really had to? But the sound on this Asus is pretty good, I have to say. The quality is pretty good. A bit of tweaking on the OSD to get the bass up sounds awesome. The only problem is it's quite quiet. So the 10 watts isn't quite enough. I needed a bigger, a bigger subwoofer. Imagine what that would have looked like on a stand. This is a 19 inch monitor as it is, so it wouldn't get much bigger back then. But I think it comes across much worse when you're watching the video because you can hear a lot of fan noise from the base unit because of where the camera is. It doesn't sound so bad when you're actually sitting in front of it playing a game. So I think it's totally passable the way it is, but I really could have done with, you know, maybe twice the volume even. Uh, just to sort of drown out any fan noise because this was an era where you still had quite a bit of that. I think if I move my base unit under the desk, I'll solve the problem and this will be a really sort of functional way of playing soundtracks to games. <laughs> thing I did was just run 3D Mark on it just to have a look at what it looks like because it gives you a good sort of uh, a run of game types and that kind of thing and it looks awesome I have to say it probably doesn't come across in the video but it, the review I read said it was oversaturated and they 
didn't like it, but I like it. It really does. It just pops the colours out at you. It's very bright. It's in the dark. It just looks awesome. That's all I have to say. Next, I got a ProView 17 inch CRT out, which is a monitor I've calibrated recently and run it side by side. And I have to say, as much as I pushed the ProView as far as its settings would go, and I know it's not the best monitor in the world, but it just didn't even compete for the sort of vibrance that the gaming LCD has. So, you know, the, the LCD is a winner for me at the moment. But obviously, the the CRTs have a character or of their own, so it's probably quite unfair to compare them. So now for a bit more of a fair competition is my go-to, previously go-to LCD, which was this 19-inch HP. But this clearly isn't aimed at gamers, but then, you know, looking around on, online, I cannot find any kind of similar spec gaming monitors or three gaming monitors from this kind of time period. So I don't think gaming monitors were really a thing back then. I think this must have been one of the early ones. But, you know, everybody's using Dells and things back then. And the big thing that everybody talked about was the response rate, which was slow. The main selling point of the Asus is it's two millisecs. I've read various people say that, you know, once you get below 100 millisecs, 125 millisecs, can't tell anyway. But the main thing for me is the colors. Again, the backlighting and the colors on the HP, you can't get it up to the same levels as you can on the Asus. In fact, the HP seems to have very similar sort of color reproduction and brightness as the CRT, the ProView. So, yeah, I don't really know. And also the other thing that is different about these LCDs is these era is everything now is about refresh rate and resolution whereas back then refresh rate and resolution were kind of intermeshed so there's no mention of you know, refresh rate on this gaming monitor it talks about its response time but for the refresh rate it depends on what resolution you're running the monitor at and what you're doing with it so if you're sort of running in dos you're going to get different Fresh rates as you will do if you're running at you know 1280 by 1024 in this XP. So the max this thing will do the Asus gaming monitor is 75 hertz at 1280 by 1024, and then it varies depending on what resolution you're running at. So if you're running in DOS at 720 by 400, you're going to get 70 hertz. If you're running at 640 by 48, you're going to get 60 hertz. So it's all over the place a little bit. No, it still blows the water out of this uh, fight between the HP and the Asus. It, the Asus is still a winner, and it's now shelf for you, HP. So as a last test, I put the ProView away and I got out the sort of default CRT that I tend to use, which is this 17-inch Hewlett Packard. And it, I can't remember who made this, obviously it isn't Hewlett, pa Hewlett Packard, but it's one of the sort of fairly big manufacturers. I like this monitor a lot, but again, it has exactly the same sort of characteristics. I have to admit, I've never compared all my CRTs against each other to see which one might be the best of them all. but. I always assume this has always been my go-to, but it still is in a very similar place to the HP LCD and the ProView CRT. You can't get close to the brightness and the saturation of the Asus, and I guess it's down to personal taste, but I like that. I like that. You know, I like the sort of cartoony, super colourful, in-your-face 
thing that it does because to me that's what gaming's all about it's not about recreating reality it's about going somewhere else to have a break <laughs> so yeah no i have to say call me a heathen if you want but if i had the choice between these two i'd take take the asus lcd i love it i like the, I like the fact that sounds built into it and i like the picture on it and i've never seen one of these sort of self-proclaiming gaming sort of four three monitors from from that time period so i love it and i'm going to be using it probably all the time for the foreseeable future but i hope you don't get too bored watching this video because i know monitors aren't a thing that you can really see i i looked for other videos about this monitor or other gaming monitors from this period there weren't any so I'm either original or I'm extremely boring. Either way, if you made it this far, thanks for sticking around. And next video, I think I'll try and go back to something a bit older. So thanks very much if you watched this. I hope you enjoyed it. I really do love this monitor and I really enjoyed messing about with it. And I haven't even scratched the surface yet. But we'll be seeing a lot of it. We'll be seeing it as well. I didn't cover so many operating systems and different specs. So you'll be seeing it with some older DOS machines and things in the future. And then... We'll sort of touch back and see how it performs in those scenarios as well. So thanks for watching. I hope you'll join me for the next video, whatever that may be. I haven't decided yet. And yeah, thank you. And I'll see you later. Bye.